and we're back. Dynamic effort bench day today, and we got ourselves a change of scenery. And it's like, it's the end of meat prep. I am in a perpetual state of feeling like I need a nap. The actual, like, wanting to train levels are very, very, very low. And I knew that if I were to just wait till the end of the day, train in the basement, number one, I wouldn't get to see the sun today, which isn't all that fun. And number two, I know that like the energy in the session wouldn't be fantastic. And it's like coming here, getting to see Bryce, getting to hang out with Bryce, getting to feed off of that big Bryce energy is making me at least a little bit more excited to train. He's in the back right now getting some work done. So might try to shove the camera in his face in a couple of moments, but let's get into it. Let's get moving. General warm up already done. So time to run those reverse grips. I figure I'll take the opportunity to use the fancy pants Eleko bench here. Also, I have no idea what my rack height should be on this thing. This feels like it. Yeah, that's close enough to work. And I had fellow PEC reattachment rehabber, Mr. Jordan Wong, running reverse grips this week. Since they've done so well on my PEC and shoulder recently, and something he was struggling with was feeling like he was going to like dump the bar down. And with a reverse grip, it's kind of counterintuitive. But when I'm setting up, I almost want to like try to roll my wrist back and kind of cock my wrist back like I really wouldn't want to do on a comp bench. But running that wrist position... <laughs> tends to let the bar stack over the elbow a bit better and makes it feel less like I'm gonna lose control a bit towards my belly as I'm lowering the bar. And ended up dropping the rack height down one onto work sets up 10 kilo from what we run in the basement. And like shoulder doesn't feel fantastic doing these right now, but it feels like the shoulders doing the things on these reverse grips that's going to make it feel more fantastic as the sets progress. So let's run them. <sighs> That felt better than the last warm up, so she's working. Yeah, it's doing really freaking good on the shoulder. Like it's just forcing that scap depression that I'm having trouble with since the pack yeah. and just makes real bench feel so much nicer. Get much strength benefit out of it, but like the shoulder feeling better is priority number one at this point. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the impact. Yeah. And figure run a couple comp grips again, just for good measure. And it's like just setting up comp grip after the reverse grip like the lat engagement, the scap depression feels so much more freaking intuitive. Yeah, it's on. All right. One more comp grip, then we're on to accessories. See if I can jam that left elbow a little harder. Whew. 
So, what is for lunch? Oh man, we got a chicken bacon leek pasta, uh, some chicken breast, some pine nuts, a bunch of onion. Sounds way too fancy for me. It's delicious. And a lot of cheese. It's very fatty, very calorie dense, some spaghetti. Key to the lunch lady body? It's how I get there. Yeah? It's how we get there. I'm taking notes. The keys to lunch lady land. <laughs> And I was a silly goose and neglected to bring my bands for chaos push up. So I figure I'm gonna continue the shoulder spinning intent with some higher rep incline key presses where like we're just trying to be palms up in the bottom, spin the palms down at the top. And as we're rotating back to palms up in the bottom, whole goal is to really try to like suck elbows towards hips, get the lats on, get the upper back engaged, really pull hard into that scap depression. And if shoulders are a little bit jacked up following your main press work for the day, this can be super duper therapeutic and it can kind of encourage the kind of lat upper back contraction that you want that should help make shoulders feel better the next time that you actually run a real press. <sighs> and I'll run reps relatively high here because I don't want to go heavy. There we go. And round two. Let's see if we make it feel better than round one. And at the bottom, I'm kind of just like trying to edge into where that left shoulder is a little bit uncomfortable. And if I can kind of like push my way towards that, the goal is going to be to desensitize it as the reps go on and see if I can push a little bit further into that ER as I go. And if I can continue pushing further and further into it, make it feel better and better and better. That is how you can make this really productive from a pain management standpoint. And that's feeling pretty darn good by this point in the set. And for triceps, similar to last week, I don't want to cook them too hard on this day, but I still want to do something for them. So I figure nice little rope push down, pumpy pump, stretchy stretch, squeezy squeeze intent should do me some good. And probably won't cook it quite as deep in the RPE range as it is last week. Still gonna work hard, but not gonna go to that like ouchy ouch, gigantic burn death by tricep pump point. Still trying to keep it slow, controlled, precise, really nail the squeeze at the bottom. But goal here is just to make the arms and elbows feel good so that even though Friday's bench session is gonna be light, I wanna be nice and fresh for that. And I touched on this last week, but under normal meat prep circumstances when I'm not coming back from a pec rupture and repair. My upper body pressing muscles are usually in a lot better shape than they are in now. And like the problem I've been having is that as soon as my bench got to the point where I felt like I could kind of push hard on my main bench on Fridays, it's like my Tuesdays almost became detrimental to my Friday. And the goal right now to the end of this peak is just to make sure that nothing I'm doing on my Tuesday is going to be taking away from my ability to perform well on Friday because if the goal is peaking for a meet, I should need, be needing to perform well on my Friday sessions. And that pump is catching up quickly this set. Whew. And I peer pressured Dylan to get in the fancy prime handles here, so I might as well use them. But if I'm doing any sort of pull down variation and I want to put lat into it. The biggest thing I'm going to do is I'm not just going to jerk on the stack. I'm going to make sure that I'm initiating by starting with setting my scaps down and then pulling from that scap down position. And the reason I want to do that, if we're thinking about upper back anatomy, the lats cross over the shoulder blade, whereas the teres group just runs from shoulder blade to the humerus. So if we're trying to get lat into pull down, 
if we lead by setting shoulder blades down, that's gonna make sure that we're leading with a lat contraction and we're gonna be able to get more lat into it. And that's gonna help us to not kind of like collapse forward and round forward like a asshole when we're running our pull downs. And that's enough for today. Well, one more set, enough for that set. All right, round two. And again, like most of the stuff I'm doing here today is less about trying to make stuff grow, less about trying to make stuff stronger and more about just like establishing connection where I want connection and doing enough that I don't lose it by the time the meet comes around. Cause like reality is at this point in prep, I'm not going to get stronger, but if I'm under recovered and I feel like a giant bag of dicks, that's not going to help me be strong on the platform. So really priority from here on out on pretty much every accessory that I'm going to be doing is really just to connect well, squeeze well, access range of motion, and really just make sure that I feel good when it's time to feel good on the platform when it really matters. So like this week's gonna be pretty minimal in terms of accessories. Next week's gonna be really minimal in terms of accessories. Week after that is gonna be really minimal in terms of accessories. And the week after that is gonna be zero accessories into the meat. Well, basically zero, gonna do some little bit of something, but right now the goal is just to make sure that I'm fresh on the platform and like, when I was less strong, I definitely got benefit out of pushing accessories harder for longer so that when I did pull out at the very end, I got a really big step up in performance from pulling out the accessories at the very end. But as I get stronger and stronger, I find that I can have better peaks by pulling out a little bit sooner to kind of let me display a little bit more strength in training than I would had I not pulled back. And it's kind of more of a art than a science because obviously if I pull back too hard, too soon on accessories, I'm gonna end up peaking in training, not for the platform. So that's the one thing I don't wanna do. So that's why you still see me doing some stuff and working relatively hard, but I am giving myself that little pullback so that I can feel less thrashed through these final sessions and that's gonna help me have a little bit more confidence in myself if I can perform that little bit better in training due to the limitations I'm freeing myself of by pulling back the fatigue on the accessories. I'm just rambling at this point, but I don't wanna stop talking until the set's done, so sorry guys. <laughs> there we go. And gonna run a dumbbell face pull next. It's an accessory I've been given to a few people lately. Like the big advantage of this versus a regular face pull on a cable is that it allows us to get a much wider pull and we make it a lot more rear delt than a regular face pull. And one thing that we don't wanna do for this, we don't wanna just be doing like a row. We wanna make sure we're getting some degree of external rotation, cutting the dumbbells up towards our face just a little bit and you should feel really gnarly in the rear delt, really gnarly through the infraspinatus, really gnarly through the mid trap. And you just wanna go until all those guys feel like they've gotten a decent amount of work in. Ah. Mission accomplished. Ah. Disadvantage of this is it can be difficult to reach the dumbbells once you set them down, but how good they feel through the upper back totally outweighs that disadvantage. Another thing that's kind of important here is you'll see me kind of letting my head fall as I lower, but I'm trying to keep my neck packed back, keep everything pulled in just so that like the neck position I'm in and the overall T-spine position I'm in is realistic to where I want my neck and my T-spine on the actual 
lifts. These are getting spicy. <laughs> and like the dumbbells kind of are sagging lower and lower as I go, which I'd say like on this exercise is at least okay as long as you still feel like you're getting a ton of tension at the end range on each rep. And if you want some hard anterior chain training but don't have a GHR to do GHR sit-ups, grab a bench to sit on, grab a power rack to hook your feet under, and from there, you can lean back over the bench, squeeze your glutes to get the full hip extension, and then pull yourself up to the top. If you want to make it more hip flexor, we're going to set our brace, make sure our torso stays rigid, and if you want to make it more rectus abdominis, when we're down here from a hip extended position, we can lead by curling the rib cage up first before completing the pull up to the top. Either way, make sure you're getting that full hip extension, make sure you're working hard and your torso will get stronger. And if you want to load it, you can grab yourself a cute little kettlebell, hold it behind your head, and that's going to make it really, really, really nasty on your abs and hip flexors. <sighs> that took like 17 takes, so vlog, that's the only set that you're going to see. And that is that boring session but a good session like it's a light session inside of a light week like it ain't gonna be all that exciting to do but the fact that the session was boring it's going to set up the rest of this light week well and this light week is going to set me up well for the last heavy push of peak and even that last heavy push isn't going to be all that super exciting but the fact that it's not going to be all that super exciting is going to set me up super duper well for meat day and that makes all of this little boring stuff i'm doing right now towards the end even if it is boring to kind of do like the fact that it's going to turn into something exciting makes me excited to finish up this prep so super stoked shoulder feels way better than when i walked into the gym today i feel way better than when i walked into the gym today got a little bit of vitamin d from the sunshine too on the way here so getting rid of that seasonal annual depression that i've been having with being locked in my dark office all day friggin' long in the canadian winter so stoked on that as well bryce is in the potty right now so i might try to ramble until he i hear that toilet flush and he comes out i don't know if i can pull that off but good training it isn't always going to be super fun. It isn't always going to be super exciting. It isn't always going to set the world on fire. But if you can have these boring sessions, they're going to add up to good sessions. Right, Bryce? Yep. Yeah? Boring training makes good training? Hey? Boring training makes good training? Yeah. Mediocre sessions are awesome. Yeah. That's how you build a total, is making these days productive even when they're not the most productive feeling. I'm rambling now, but I think that's what I got for today, guys. Super stoked to be here at Calgary Barbell. Make sure that you follow Bryce on Instagram. Make sure that you subscribe to Bryce on YouTube. I'm assuming that if you're watching me, you already have done that. But just in case you haven't, make sure you guys do that. So peace out. Have a good rest of your day.